Hey everyone, in this lesson we're going to learn about the famous WordPress loop. But before we do that, let's give ourselves a goal. So let's imagine that on the home page of our website, we want to output the most recent blog posts. So before we dig into code, let's make sure that we have more than one blog post to work with. So let's go to our WP Admin backend dashboard. So here we go to posts, make sure our site is running. Oh, it looks like it's the wrong site. So let's start it, get out of here, go here, WP admin, log in, posts, make sure we got more than one. Let's just add like two. Save that, publish, go back, add new, publish. So now with our three posts, we should be able to output those blog posts onto our home page. So let's jump over into our text editor and in our theme folders index.php, let's delete the code we have from the previous lesson. So let's jump to PHP, do a while loop. So in our previous lessons, we had to do all sorts of things like create account variables and manually increment those. We did something like if count is less than a certain number, then continue the while loop. Well, this time around, we're not going to have to do that. We're no longer working with hypothetical lists of names. Now we'll be working with real WordPress content and WordPress has exact functions we can use to do that pre-built functions. So we can go in between our while loop and use a special WordPress function name, have underscore posts. And then to run that, we would do parentheses. So forget programming. This almost just makes sense reading it. While we have posts, we're going to keep looping. Within our curly brackets, what do we want to do? So before we can output anything, we need to call the post. This is a WordPress function we could call and leverage, and it does a lot of things. One of the things the post function does is keep track of which post we're currently working with. Each time our wall loop runs, this the post function will tell WordPress to get all the relevant information about the next blog for us to use. So right after this, the post, let's drop out of PHP. And in this line where we're closing the curly bracket, Let's drop back into PHP. And what this is going to do is that in between those two lines, we're still in between the while loop, but now we're in HTML mode here. So let's do an H2. And in between the H2, let's say hello, and then save it and refresh. We see three hellos because we have three blog posts. So obviously it's not very useful to say three hellos. Instead, we want to output the title of each blog post. Now watch how easy this is. In between our headline, let's drop into PHP. So we could do something like go into PHP, open and close. In between, we can call the underscore title. Save it, refresh, cool. We got the title for each post. Next, let's output the body content of each post right below the title. Let's go back to our code. Underneath our H2, let's go into PHP mode. And in between, we could do the underscore content. And right under this, let's just add a horizontal rule to give it some visual differentiation between the different posts. In the real world, we would use CSS. But this is just a quick solution. Let's save it, refresh, and we get our post body. So here's another goal. Let's imagine whenever we click the headline, we want to be taken to a detailed screen with just that one single post. So if we want to turn the headline into links, you might know that with A tags, we just wrap an element in order to be able to link it. So let's minimize this. Here's the H2. Let's wrap or h2 content in an a tag and then close it so the question is what do we type in the href so wordpress has a function that'll give us that perfect url so let's drop into php here so let's save it and test it out 
so the headlines look like links and if we click it we do go to that single post and notice the URL WordPress knows what data to query from the database based on the URL that we visit so this is the permalink for the second blog post so WordPress knows to fetch just that post from the database when we're just at our home page by default WordPress will fetch our 10 most recent blogs while we're on the home page but if we click that link then it's only going to give us or query that one post that way when we loop through our posts there's only going to be that one so another goal once we're on our single post it doesn't make sense for the headline to keep the link so how do we let that remain a link while we're on the home page while we're moving it once we get to a single detail page we'll check this out let's go back to our text editor let's go ahead and create a new file in our theme folder single.php so here we could do something like hello123 refresh our page here we see hello123 when we are on the URL for a single post but if we go to our home page we see it's still powered by index.php what this means is that depending on the current URL WordPress is going to be on the lookout for different file names in our theme folder so our home page uses index.php but if we click one of these single posts WordPress will look within our theme folder for a file called single.php if the file doesn't exist then WordPress will use index.php as a universal default but saying all that remember on this screen we just want to show the blog title and the content but we don't want the title to be linked so here's what we can do back in our text editor let's go into index.php let's copy all this and then go into single.php and delete that paste then just remove the a tag let's go ahead and save refresh and cool it's not linked let's go to the home page so in our home page we do get the link but once we go into our single blog post we don't have the link so what about removing the horizontal rule when we're on the single blog post same thing we would go over here and remove that hr from the single.php refresh perfect so that's working with posts let's say we're working with pages so let's go this way pages add new pages So then we could view page and that takes us to a screen with only the content of that one page. And if we see the URL, we see the URL or slug test page two. And even though this only shows information for that one page, we see the headline is still linked, which tells us that this URL is being powered by index.php instead of single.php. And that's because WordPress only uses the single.php file for individual posts for individual pages wordpress looks in our themes folder for a file named page.php so let's go ahead and make that so let's create new file page.php and instead of typing it all again let's just go into single php and copy it copy it go into page paste it and to prove this is a page under here let's just do save it refresh so this shows us this is page.php so if we just go back to our home page we see this is powered by index.php if we click on one of the blog posts this is powered by single.php so the important concept we're learning in this lesson is that depending on the url we're at wordpress will use different files in our theme folder to display what's on the screen and even though we have different files like page single index they all have one thing in common and that's that they all use the famous loop which is this famous while loop which is doing something for each item in our posts so any wordpress developer will know what you're talking about if you mention the loop 
and it's at the heart and soul of WordPress, and it's something you will use again and again when developing for WordPress. So that'll bring this lesson to a close, but in the next lesson, we'll look at creating a universal header and footer. Should be fun. I'll see you guys then.